What's going on guys, Waco here from Revolution. Uh, I'm gonna do my typical international greeting. So hello, bonjour, ciao ragazzi, hola amigos, uh, shalom, assalamu alaikum habibis, uh, and ni hao and namaste. Uh, I'm so happy you can join us here at the Revolution Watch Bar in Singapore as we are going to celebrate a very special watch, the Piaget Altiplano Ultimate Concept, which has just arrived here fresh from its win at last year's Geneva Grand Prix. So what makes the Piaget Altiplano Ultimate Concept so special and the subject of today's video? Well, as you all know, it's the world's thinnest mechanical watch with a thickness of just two millimeters. It is also incidentally one of the world's lightest mechanical watches weighing just 23 grams when it's fitted with its strap. So how thin is 2mm? Honestly, when you behold the 41mm in diameter watch in the flesh, you think you're witnessing some kind of optical illusion. It literally looks like it is a picture of a watch that has been cut out and placed in front of you and that it is effectively two-dimensional. But then as you look closer and you realize that its balance wheel is oscillating, it starts to play tricks with your mind. And it's only when you reach out and pick it up, you realize that it is in fact very real. Now the dynamic tension when you shift in perspective from what you thought was two dimensions into three dimensions is what's so initially alluring about this watch. But what I would like to stress is that the Ultimate Concept is one of the most technically ambitious watches of all time and actually pays tribute to some of the most groundbreaking concepts in the history of watchmaking created by geniuses such as the royal maker, watchmaker to the French court, Jean-Antoine Le Pen, Jean Lassalle, and the duo of Maurice Grimm and André Bainer, two watchmakers who created seminal works in the 1980s for the likes of Audemars Piguet. But most of all, the watch is a celebration of Piaget, who is most synonymous with the creation of the world's most famous ultra-thin calibers. In fact, those are the 2 mm in thickness Manual Wine 9P from 1957, and the 2.3 mm in thickness Micro Rotor Equipped 12P from 1960, which is an automatic movement. Indeed, the whole idea, as Piaget's Ultra Dynamic CEO Shabinori explains, was to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the 9P with an entire watch that was the same size as the groundbreaking 9P. And in so doing, affirmed Piaget's status as the creator of some of the most elegant ultra-thin watches ever made. I should also note that personally, I love Piaget's design vibe, which I've kind of always associated with the ineffable Riviera chic of the 60s and 80s, uh, and which is now more relevant than ever. So the fact that Piaget combines that sense of visual elan, that sense of style, with real horological credibility and ambition is very winning to me. Finally, I should say that the ultimate concept could not have been made without a real understanding of watchmaking history, with an incredible sense of technical ingenuity and one quality that I sometimes feel is most lacking in the watch industry today, and that is courage. So I would like to give a big shout out to Shabi Nouri and the entire team at Piaget for the incredible fortitude expressed by this mind-blowing watch. They are true to the expression of their company's motto, always do better than necessary. Okay. Before we get into the ultimate concept, let's jump back in time to 2014 when Piaget made its first groundbreaking move in the creation of modern ultra-thin watches with the Altiplano 900P. What's important to note was previous to this, we always kind of talked about thin watches first by the dimension of their movements and then by the dimensions of their cases. So for example, a Bulgari Octo Finissimo manual wine has a movement that is 2.23 mm in thickness but a case that was 5.15 in thickness. But with the Altiplano 900P, Piaget realized that actually, no one really cared about the dimension of the movement. What people cared about was the dimension of the final watch, which in this case was an incredible 3.65 mm in thickness. And anyway, there was no separate measurement for the movement because ultimately Piaget utilized a really cool concept for the 900P, which was to merge the case and the movement into one. Okay, so in a typical watch, you have a mid case, a case back, and a bezel. In the case of the 900P, first Piaget merged the mid case and the case back into one monoblock unit. And the second thing which they did, which was super cool, was then Piaget then transformed the case into the base plate of the movement. So as you probably know, the base plate is like the chassis of the movement, the main structural element where you attach the bridges, the gears, the pinions, and the rubies. Piaget normally makes its movements at Cotofi, and it makes its cases in Plan Watt. But with this watch, they had to develop the movement at the same facility in Plan Le Watt where they made the cases because the components for the case and the components for the movements are one and the same, which is pretty cool. The next thing to understand is that in the 900P, Piaget built everything to essentially be on the same plane to reduce volume. And that means there's no dial of the watch. The hands are integrated into the movement. The gear wheels and the upper bridges are all on the same level as the hands. This basically means that the watchmaker builds this watch directly into the case perfectly fitting every finished component, including the totally visible gear train and upper bridge into the case from the front of the watch before sealing it by the bezel, which is secured by screws on the back of the watch. 
This is actually kind of a super challenging process because on a normal watch, you can construct the movement, adjust, regulate it, fit on the dial, fit on the hands before casing it up. There are steps to the process and you can kind of take a break and relax and fix any particular thing related to that one specific component. However, in the 900P, everything has to be done on the watch itself and the care you have to take not to scratch any surface while ensuring that the clearances for the gears to run smoothly is extremely challenging. But that was just the beginning because next Piaget had to optimize the thinness of every part and also solve some fairly substantial hurdles. It basically looked at every one of the 145 parts comprising this watch and tried to make it as slim as possible. That's why the gear wheels that are normally 0.2 mm are now 0.12 mm. Piaget also realized that one of the thickest components of the watch would be the balance wheel, and so it had to ensure that the entire mechanism and hand fitting system would be contained within the thickness of the balance wheel. In order to reduce the dimensions of the movement, Piaget used a technique called the suspended barrel, invented by a watchmaker named Jean Antoine Lepin. Now, this kind of barrel is only supported on one side, similar to a flying tourbillon, and requires a great deal of precision to mount efficiently. Amusingly, this technical breakthrough was necessitated by the trend in men's fashion in the mid-18th century. Le Pen was the watchmaker to the French court in the 18th century, and around this time, men started to wear a tighter and shorter waistcoat, meaning that the bulky pocket watches they used to wear protruded from them in a vulgar way. So Le Pen created a much slimmer caliber, with a, which featured a cylindrical escapement and a hanging barrel, a barrel that was only suspended on one side. And this technique has been used in a few wristwatch movements over the years, um, also in pursuit of thinness, such as the JLC-designed automatic 2121, used in Audemars Piguet's Royal Oak, which is 3.05 mm thick with a date wheel, but actually just 2.45 mm without it. Finally, even the sapphire crystal of the watch was optimized by reducing it to a mere 0.5 mm in thickness. Now, one issue was that resulted was a slight flex to the crystal when pressure was exerted on it would happen. And if the crystal flexed too much, it would press on the watch hands, causing the movement to stop. To avoid this, Piaget ensured that the hands are recessed below the height of the movement's upper bridge, which acts as a kind of block to protect the watch. The resulting timepiece was a revelation in terms of design and technical ingenuity. In 2017, Piaget unveiled the next chapter in its pursuit of ultra-thin innovation with the Altiplano Ultimate Automatic with the caliber 910P. Now, amusingly, it seems to also have gotten a little bit more inventive with its naming of this family of watches as they threw in the name Ultimate in there, but in this case, it was pretty accurate. So back in 1960, Piaget followed up the amazing 9P with the pretty staggering uh, 12P movement, an ultra-thin caliber equipped with a micro rotor that was just 2.3 mm in thickness and obviously automatic. Indeed, this record stood all the way until 2017 when Bulgari launched its automatic micro-rotor movement at 2.23 mm, which is 0.07 thinner than the, the 12P, which is you know, amazing considering the 12P was created back in 1960. But that same year, Piaget once again set a new standard with a watch that was just 4.3 mm in thickness. Just like the 900P, the 910P took advantage of Piaget's signature integration of the case and the movement into one monolithic unit. But the question was, of course, how could they integrate an automatic winding system without adversely affecting the thickness of the watch? So let's look at the different options. A centrally mounted rotor would have added too much height, and a micro rotor would have necessitated space which the watch couldn't afford. Piaget's solution was a brilliant one, which was to use a peripheral rotor mounted on the perimeter of the movement just inside the watch's bezel. This oscillating weight takes the form of a thin 22 karat gold ring treated with a black PVD coating. It is connected to the movement with a ceramic ball bearing system visible at two o'clock. Because it occupies such a larger diameter, it had a very good moment of inertia, and that meant that this weight was incredibly efficient in terms of winding the movement quickly. It also brought an additional level of visual pyrotechnics to the front of the watch. And while the manual wind 900P was 38 mm in diameter, the 910 equipped watch, automatic watch, was 41 mm in diameter to make space for the peripheral rotor. But, you know, it's also kind of cool. It gives it a really nice sporty look, and if you try it on your wrist, I think you'll find that it's a brilliant size. Okay, let's pause here to discuss Piaget's brilliant innovation in merging the case of the watch with the base plate and making it all one unit. Uh, this is not a totally new idea in watchmaking, but it was the first time it was done totally successfully uh, in the pursuit of thinness, and perhaps more importantly in a watch suited to the modern needs of 
you know, daily wear, including 20 meters water resistance. The idea of making a watch where the case, dial, and movement were all one unit was also undertaken by several other companies. Um, you have it in Swatch. So Swatch did it not to reduce the thinness of their watch, but to minimize the number of parts so that the watch could be much more affordable. But in high watch making, it was attempted in 1986 by Audemars Piguet with their Jacqueline Dimier design ultra thin automatic tourbillon. Uh, accredited oftentimes as the very first wristwatch tourbillon. However, this watch did not feature a regular crown. Its mainspring could not be manually wound. The rubies for the gear train pinions were actually visible from the back case, which meant you probably shouldn't take it into the jacuzzi with you. Also, it should be noted that this watch was more of a one-off experiment rather than a watch that was continually produced. However, the two watchmakers that conceptualized this system were pretty cool guys. They were named Maurice Grimm and Andre Boehner, and they should be noted for trying something that was truly ambitious. I think probably one of the reasons why they couldn't make it in series um, or in greater quantities or apply it to other watches at the time was probably the limits of a technical ability in terms of precision engineering. The point is that the groundbreaking 900P and 910P are the first watches that were able to make this integration so precise and robust that these watches could be serially produced and I think that's quite an achievement. They both run at 3 hertz, and the manual wind watch has 48 hours of power reserve while its automatic winding sibling has 50 hours. So now you can see that the amazing Geneva Grand Prix Aiguidor winning Piaget LT Plano Ultimate Concept is a further extension of the innovations that you find in both the 900 and the 910P watches. Look at it this way, if the LT Plano 900 and 910P are like the GT cars, then the Ultimate Concept is like that ultra rare concept car like a Aston Martin Valkyrie, where the pursuit is the ultimate in design and performance with no limits. But what exactly is so special about the LT Plano Ultimate Concept? You get the fact that in the words of Monty Python, it is Wefal Thin. But what else? Well, check this out. The watch is also the very first timepiece in the world to have a flying balance wheel com combined with a flying barrel combined with a suspended or flying gear train. What am I talking about? Okay, you all know that a flying tourbillon is a tourbillon that is only suspended from one point from the back. Basically, there's no upper bridge to the tourbillon and it's entirely supported from the back by the pinion of the cage. The visual effect is that it looks like it's flying or suspended in space. Well, check out the balance wheel of the ultimate concept. The balance wheel is floating in space. And this is because it is entirely supported from behind and instead of resting on a pinion between rubies, it is supported and oscillates between ceramic ball bearings. This is to save as much height as possible, but ceramic ball bearings also have the advantage of offering a very good shock absorption to the balance, allowing Piaget to dispense with the traditional Inca block or Kiff style system, which would have taken more space and height. On the subject of the balance, can you see that this element is completely redesigned to be much thinner than a normal balance wheel, and that the way it is set up is when the hairspring underneath the balance. Also, as there is no more bridge for the balance, the hairspring is now attached to the main plate, which is monoblock with the case. If you look at the tiny banana-shaped cutout under the balance wheel to the left, you can see that Piaget had to invent a little system that allows you to effectively change the length of the hairspring. Note that the balance wheel and the barrel are suspended on ceramic bowl bearings, as well as three other wheels in the drivetrain. These are the third wheel, the center wheel, and one more wheel related to the barrel, which means that the only wheels that are fixed to the base plate with jewels are the second wheel and the escape wheel. So for me, I think it's fair to call it a flying gear train. Now look at the barrel at six o'clock. You can see that the barrel has been reconceptualized to be as minimalistic as possible. It is fully skeletonized, so you have visibility to the mainspring in state of wine. But importantly, there's no jewel or bridge retaining the barrel, and it seems to be floating in space. Interestingly, the Altiplano Ultimate Concept is not the first watch or movement to attempt a suspended gear train. However, it is the first to get it to work perfectly. In 1976, uh, Jean LaSalle created a movement that was one of the most daring technical breakthroughs of all time. It was a manual wine caliber that was a mere 1.2 mm in thickness and named the caliber 1200. In order to achieve this, the barrel of the movement as well as the gear train was suspended, meaning that they were all supported from one point from the back rather than having an upper bridge. And because this meant that they couldn't be supported with traditional jeweled pinions, they were secured in place using, that's right, you guessed it, ball bearings. But the problem was in the context of the time, these tiny bearings couldn't be made as uniform as possible, which led to service issues. The mythology goes that these movements were so fragile that when a total service was required, the practice was simply to remove these movements and replace them with new ones, which, as you can imagine, was not particularly cost effective. 
Eventually, LaSalle was purchased by Lamania, and in 1981, the group that owned Lamania decided to sell it to its own management team, and the investors that backed this deal were the Piaget family. This new company was called Nouvelle Lamania, and as such, Piaget had the right to use the famous LaSalle Calibre 1200, and this formed the base of the famous Piaget Calibre 20P. The point is that Piaget's history with the suspended gear train and suspended barrel goes back more than 40 years, and if there's any brand in the world that has greater legitimacy to use this innovation, then Piaget actually doesn't exist. What is amazing about the ultimate concept is that because the case and main plate of the movement are one uniform piece crafted from an ultra rigid cobalt alloy, they offer the perfect stability to use a suspended gear train. In addition to that, the use of computer and numeric machining combined with ceramic ball bearings, which are made with incredible precision and uniformity, require no lubrication and are not susceptible to magnetism, allow the ultimate concept to be the perfect vehicle for the suspended gear train. Another major achievement for the ultimate concept relates to the crown and its time setting operation. In many of the ultra thin concept watches, time setting is used using a key integrated into the back case as with the aforementioned Audemars Piguet ultra thin tourbillon. But for Piaget, this wasn't good enough. Shabi Nouri, the brand CEO, stressed how much the watch had to be a real functional, ergonomic, wearable, and usable timepiece, and that meant it had to have a real crown. Now, the issue is that the time setting in a normal crown uses a vertical wheel, which occupies a certain amount of height. But this wouldn't be possible in the ultimate concept. As such, Piaget developed an endless gear system that would accomplish this task. That having been said, because the crown is so tiny and has been integrated into the case, Piaget also supplies you with a motorized tool that you can use for winding and even setting the watch. On the material front, the case of the ultimate concept is made, as mentioned, from a ultra-rigid cobalt alloy, which is expensive to machine because of the wear it exerts on tools. It was necessary to use this material to ensure that the watch, in all of its 2mm thinness, never bends even if you were to, for example, accidentally sit on it. The sapphire crystal of the ultimate concept is 0.2 mm in thickness, which is five times thinner than a normal sapphire crystal and fitted directly to the case with aerospace glue as there is no bezel for the watch. As with supercars, I mentioned Piaget doesn't produce many of these each year. The number I've been told is somewhere around five watches. So stressful is the process to construct one of these that after each watch, the master watchmaker is required to fly to Hawaii, stare at the ocean for a month in order to regain his sanity. Okay, I'm just joking here, but it only just a bit. So the crazy research and development that went into this watch is reflected in its 400,000 Swiss franc asking price. But at the same time, as the Geneva Grand Prix has clearly affirmed, this is a super historically important watch. Finally, if you do have 400,000 Swiss francs in the bank and you are enamored with this watch, you can fully customize it to your taste. And that I mean fully. That means the color of the case, the plate, the chapter ring, the dial, everything is in your hands. Meaning that the Altiplano Ultimate Concept is not just one hell of a technical breakthrough and a demonstration of Piaget's commitment to excelling and pushing boundaries, but also a canvas for your self-expression.